If you have your Bible, would you turn with me to the book of John? John chapter number 15. It'll take me a little bit to get there, but if you'll just mark John chapter 15, I want to show you a new thought, okay? There'll be this new thought towards the end of the sermon, but for right now, you're turning to John 15. I'm going to back up a little bit. I'm going to share some scripture verses on the screen. I encourage you to write those down so that you have the reference to where these verses are located. But we're going to look at what I'm calling for the title of this sermon, a collision course. Okay, if you'd listen to me, here we go. Our world right now is divided into two kingdoms. There are two kingdoms that are at work in our world. One is the kingdom of light, the Bible calls it. It's also called the kingdom of God. Come on, how many know what I'm talking about? The kingdom of God. But there is another kingdom, the Bible says, that is at work too. And this kingdom is the kingdom of darkness. The Bible refers to this kingdom as the kingdom of darkness. And the leader or the ruler of the kingdom of darkness is none other, according to the Bible, than Satan himself. Now, brace yourself for this, but don't be too shocked. I have been a citizen in both kingdoms. Hello? <laughs> okay. Is it the weather? Is it just the day? Y'all are acting like first service, okay? First service was like, I mean, by the end of first service, I was like, really? I have to preach this message again. Wonderful, you know? Uh, I have been a member of both of those kingdoms, and before you get too high and mighty, so have you. Come on, church. There's not a person in this room that hasn't been a member, if you will, a citizen, let me say it that way, of the kingdom of darkness or the kingdom of this world, but also I pray that you will find yourself, if you haven't already, becoming a part of the kingdom of God, okay? There are two kingdoms. They have been on a collision course since before time began when Lucifer in his pride, stood up and was cast out of heaven, the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light have been at war with each other. And there is a collision course that is taking place. As you sit in this room this morning, you're in one of those two kingdoms. You're in one of those two kingdoms. You're in the kingdom of God or you're in the kingdom of darkness. And you may say, no, Pastor Brad, I got one foot in the world, but I got one foot in the kingdom of God. Wrong again. You are lukewarm and the Bible's clear you're going to be spewed out of his mouth. I know that because I've been lukewarm before. Come on, somebody. I'm standing up here once again confessing my sins as if y'all don't have any. Hello? I've been a part of the kingdom of darkness, not on purpose. I wasn't a devil worshiper. Instead, I was a Brad worshiper. Hello? <laughs> I never worshiped Satan, but I sure worshiped me, what I wanted, what I thought was right for me, my way, uh, the highway. I've definitely fallen into this world system, a worldly way of thinking. But I got news for you. Uh, in 1993, long time ago, he delivered me from the kingdom of darkness and brought me into to the kingdom of his glorious light. I can stand here before you at 30 years. I've been in the kingdom of God and, and I don't want to leave the kingdom of God. And as a matter of fact, I want to shine bright for Jesus in the kingdom of God. And, and, and yet I, I will say, maybe you're here today and you would say, pastor Brad, I'm not sure what kingdom I'm in. If you don't know, let me help you. You're in the kingdom of darkness. <laughs> Okay, to period, you're in the kingdom of darkness. If you don't know, you're in the kingdom of darkness. You're like, Pastor, that's a little harsh. I'd rather be harsh and say, hey, get right with God than to say you're okay, okay? I would rather stand up here before you and say, choose you this day what kingdom you're gonna be in, okay? And you're like, Pastor Brad, I'm a Christian. Well, let me put this in biblical terms. Look at what the Bible says in Colossians 1, 13 and 14. The Bible says, for he rescued us from the kingdom of darkness. Can we get an amen right there? You're not amen in me. You're amen in the Bible. This is the Bible, all right? You can at least amen the Bible. The Bible says, for he rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son. Come on, church. Somebody say amen to that, man. Uh, look, look, you may not be in an amen mood, but I'm in a little better mood than you are. Amen. 
And, and man, I, I'm just telling you, this excites me because that's my story. You just heard my story. I was in the kingdom of darkness. I wasn't doing all kind of evil stuff. I just wasn't doing what was right in God's eyes. And there was some things I was doing that wasn't right. Come on, say amen, shame the devil right now. <laughs> Because we've all been in this kingdom of darkness, but, but he transferred us. I like that scripture there, that translation. He brought us into the kingdom of his dear son. Look at verse 14. Pastor Brett, how did that happen? Well, you see, Jesus Christ purchased our freedom on Calvary's cross. Is there an amen in this church? Turn to your neighbor and say, uh, we, we say amen every now and then. Go ahead, tell them. Whew. Uh, every now and then, amen. Make that a little more frequent. He purchased us, Jesus Christ purchased our freedom, and then he forgave our sins. I asked Christ into my heart. I repented of my sins. I didn't just say I was sorry. I turned from my sin. I stopped living the ways of this kingdom, and I began to live in the kingdom of God, which is a total different kingdom, a total different way of living. And now, as a Christian, again, keep in mind, this is just a little bit of review. I want to let my light shine. Let's see if you do any better than the first service. Sing it with me if you know it. This little light of mine. Uh-huh. Come on. I'm going to. Okay, okay. Stop right now. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're getting old. Go on, tell them that. That, I hope that's a song we still teach in kids' church because, hey, adults, we need to be letting our light shine. We live in a dark world. How many of you say amen to that? And I don't mean dark because it's raining and it's cloudy and the sun's not bright. I'm talking about the evil world system. It's a world system. I love this world if you're talking about the mountains and the beaches and if you're talking about going fishing. There's things I love, but here's the deal. Do I love the worldly system in the Greek? Do I love the ways of the... No, 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 no. When I walked in darkness, I thought that was good, but no, no. I've been transferred into the kingdom of light. Because Christ died for me. I repented of my sins. Come on. Is this your story too? Come on. Is this your story? You say, Pastor Brad, it's not my story. You better change your story. <laughs> you better change your history and make your history history. Did you catch that? <laughs> you, you better change it. So now with that being said, let me say this. If you're going to let your light shine, remember who the light of the world is. Look at John 8, 12. I've preached in the rain before, not literally, but in this building. Yeah, maybe I have. I, I preached in this building before. The acoustics are horrible. It's hard to preach. I'm getting louder. Kevin can turn me up. You can hear me. Help me out by listening. Amen. John 8, 12 says, Jesus spoke to the people once more and said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness. Come on, somebody say amen to that. Because you will have the light that leads to life. I mean, this is what happened to me. This is my story. I spent too many years in the kingdom of the world doing worldly things, thinking worldly thoughts, acting worldly. But one day I reached a point to where I had to make a decision and the Holy Spirit, he chose me. The Holy Spirit chose you. This isn't a predestination message. This is a whosoever God, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I called on the name of the Lord. His light began to shine in my heart I stopped walking in darkness. Come on, watch this. And now I'm supposed to be shining bright for Jesus Christ. Not just me, but you too. We are supposed to be shining brighter for Jesus. Last week I enjoyed Pastor Ryan's sermon as he shared, how can I shine brighter for Jesus? You need the word and you need the spirit of God. Come on, amen, church. We need word. We need God's word. We need to have that word hid in our heart. But the Holy Spirit can begin to activate that word. The Holy Spirit is such a key component. Amen, church? The Holy Spirit is something we all need. And, and why do you need the Holy Spirit? Because that's how I can shine bright for Jesus is with the Spirit of God. 
God shining through us. Amen. A few weeks ago, it's been a couple months ago, I preached a message called Moonshine, and I'll never forget that because I was told, come up with a better title, amen. But the idea behind the Moonshine sermon was simply about the eclipse that was going to happen. And the idea of an, of an eclipse is the fact that every now and then, the moon gets in front of the sun. Come on, y'all saw that. Many of you saw that. And when the moon gets in front of the sun, the sun quits giving off its light. The job of the moon is to reflect the sun. The job of the moon is to bring light at night because the sun reflects off of the moon and the moon shines light into our dark world. Come on, church. You're supposed to be shining for Jesus Christ. He's the S-O-N and his light should be reflecting for us. I'm reviewing what I've said to you already before and I hope you're getting it this morning. Watch this. Verse John 14, 12 says this. John 14, 12 says, I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done and even greater works because I'm going to be with the Father. See, Jesus said of his followers that we would be shining his light for him that the Spirit of God would be working in all of us who are believers so that our light, not our light, his light reflected through us could shine for this dark world. I hope you're shining this morning for Jesus Christ. I hope the light of Jesus is glowing in what you say and what you do. And we've been focusing the last few weeks on shining for Jesus. And, and how can we shine brighter? Well, you need the word. You need the spirit. Well, Pastor Brad, how can I shine brighter today? How can I know that my light is shining? If you have your Bible, we're in John chapter 15. John 15 verses 18 through 20. Jesus said these words. He said in verse 18, if the world hates you, remember that it hated me first. Okay, now, now look up here for a second. The world, there's a kingdom of darkness. And, and then that king, it's a kingdom of this world. The ruler of the kingdom of this world is Satan himself. So, so we see the kingdom of darkness. We see the kingdom of this world and the kingdom of this world, the, Jesus says, the, if the world hates you, remember that it hated me first. Next verse. The world would love you as one of its own if you belong to it, but you are no longer a part of this world, so it hates you. Come on, Christians, say amen to that. When I was a part of this world over here, this, this ungodly, sinful world, man, I, I didn't have any problems. And if I had any problems, it was you Christians. To be flat honest with you, the people that I didn't like was Christians because Christians were telling me I'm wrong. And Christians would tell me I shouldn't live this way. And Christians were always telling me that I better change my life or I'm going to hell. And guess what? I hated Christians for that. And why did I hate them? Why did I hate them? Because there's two kingdoms. And you're else in this kingdom of God or you're in the kingdom of the world. And they are at odds with each other. And there's a collision course that's taking place. And Jesus is the light of the world. He wants to shine through us. But when he shines through us, come on, stay with me. The world, he says, is going to hate you. The world, not meaning, again, uh, I'll explain it later. Verse 20. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I didn't finish all that one. Go back to 19, please. But you are no longer part of the world, so it hates you. Look at this. I chose you to come out of the world, so it hates you. Verse 20. Do you remember what I told you? A slave is not greater than the master. Since they persecuted me, naturally, they will persecute you. If they had listened to me, they would listen to you. You're like, Pastor Brad, I sure hope today you've got a good, upbeat positive message, man. Today is one of the best you'll ever hear from the Church of Garden Valley. I am positive. If you're a Christian, you're going to get persecuted. 
See, if you follow Jesus and you really let your light shine, you're going to get persecuted for it. If you really let your light shine, and I'm about to show you what I mean. I'm about to give you some modern examples of what I'm talking about. When you let your light shine as a Christian, you will be persecuted. So how do I know, Pastor Brad, if I'm really letting my light shine? There's lots of ways. I need everybody to hear what I just said. There are lots of ways that you can know your light for Jesus is shining bright. In other words, when, when, people are, when, when people are blessed by the things that you say or the things you do, that could be an indication that you're shining for Jesus. But on the same hand, good people or, or evil people can still do good things. Come on, y'all. So, so it's not just that, but here's another way you can know if your light is shining bright for Jesus. As you begin to shine for him and people People come to Christ and accept Christ and they leave the kingdom of darkness and they say things like, I've seen what you've been going through. I've seen the troubles you've been having. How many of you know a lot of times the light shines the brightest in the darkest moments of our lives? I, I'm just being honest and don't mean I like it, but it's the truth. Oftentimes when we Christians go through difficulties and struggles and hard times, that's when the light can shine the brightest. I know what Jesus said, a city on a hillside is, cannot be hidden. That's an analogy talking about you can't hide the light if you really let it shine. But I've seen my light, which is his light, reflecting through me, shine the brightest when I have had most difficulties in my life. I'm not looking for problems. How many know they just find us? I'm not looking for bad health. I'm not looking for trials and tribulations. But let me tell you, if you're going to live on this earth, it's going to rain on the just and the unjust. And there are going to be times in your life when you're going through something so hard. But that's when you got to stand for Jesus. That's when you got to let that light shine. That's when the world is going to say, there's something different about that guy. There's something different about that woman. Well, yeah, because I no longer live in this kingdom. Come on, church. I no longer live in this kingdom. I live in the kingdom of the glorious light of Jesus Christ. I'm a child of God. He delivered me from that kingdom. Watch this. And he wants to deliver you too. I'm here today to tell you something probably not too popular, probably not the most exciting sermon. I should have took a break this week and given this one to Ryan. Come on, amen. <laughs> he would have knocked it out of the park. But the truth of the matter is, I don't mind preaching this because I'm living it. I'm living it, and to be honest, it is most miserable. It doesn't make me want to leave the kingdom of God, but when you have family that are living in the kingdom of darkness, and you see what they're doing, and, and you take a stand for Jesus Christ, and you say, that's not right, and I will not okay that, and that's not acceptable in God's eyes. Let me tell you, even those that you love will hate you. Even those you care the most about. I'm taking this stand because it's the truth, and I'm taking this stand not because I'm better than you. I've lived in both kingdoms. Come on, church. Don't get so high and mighty you forget where you came from. Don't get so high and mighty in the kingdom of God, you forget one day you were over here in this kingdom too. And, and now that you're over here, come on, with humble hearts, we ought to say, look, I love you, and I love you enough, come on, watch this, to tell you the truth. And it's not me who offends you, it's the truth I stand for. Let me say this, and I hope you hear me, people are not our enemies, Turn to your neighbor and say, you're, most days you're not my, no, no, I mean, say, say, you're not my enemy. Go and tell them that. You're not my enemy. People are not our enemies. I'm, I'm telling you, people are not our enemies. How many of you know the Bible says that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood? The Bible, people aren't my enemies. Well, Pastor Brad, I don't like that person over there. I don't like what they do. No kidding, because they're in the kingdom of darkness. Because they're just doing what their father, the enemy, come on somebody, they're just living the way the enemy, have y'all forgot how y'all used to live? Well, I'm going to find some of your high school buddies, I want some, no, I'm telling you. 
I, I, you don't forgot what kingdom you came from. I'm telling you, every one of us came from this kingdom. God forbid, some may still be here this morning in this kingdom of darkness, but it's time to get out of the kingdom of darkness. It's time to get into the kingdom of light. And if you're in the kingdom of light, let your light shine. Pastor Brad, if I let my light shine, I'm going to have to take a stand for unborn children. How many know one of the hot topics on the presidential ballot this year will once again be the unborn children? Let me be blunt. We have had men and women who made terrible mistakes when they were not living in the kingdom of God, and some of my closest friends had an abortion when they were young. I refuse to throw stones at anyone who had an abortion. Because while it is wrong, and while I never had any kind of dealings like that, folks, I've done plenty of things in the kingdom of darkness. And before I throw stones at someone who had an abortion, how many know we can't go back and change the past? But church, we can change the future. And to change the future, the church of Jesus Christ needs to have a voice for the unborn. I'm preaching a little better than y'all are amen in me right now. And we must stand up as a church and say that the sanctity of life matters. And how many of you know life begins at conception? You say, Pastor Brad, why are you saying that? Because it's one of those things that are going to make me hated. And I'm not saying it to be hated. I don't want to be hated. Anybody wake up today and go, boy, I hope 10 new people hate me today. <laughs> If, if you said that this morning, I'd like to talk to you at the altar at the conclusion of this service. Nobody woke up today saying, I want to be hated by 10 new people. I don't want to be hated. I want to be accepted. I want to be loved. And the easiest way to do that, Christian, watch, is compromise your faith. I have had to take a hard stand with my own family, and y'all are tired of hearing it, and I'm tired of talking about it, to be honest, but it came up once again just this Friday, where once again, my wife and I find ourselves deeply in love with our own family. Are y'all hearing me? That's my flesh and blood I'm talking about, and I love them, and will do anything for them, and I love them so much, I will stand for truth even when they hate me for it. Y'all hearing me out there? Yes. Pastor Brad, that must feel good. You're sick. You're just sick if you think that feels good. You're just messed up in the head if you think what I just said feels good because it doesn't. As somebody who's living it right now, this is one of the most heartbreaking times I've ever had in my life. I thought, I thought the golden years were golden. Come on, older folks in this room. No, here's what I thought. I thought that my master was hated. And why would I, his servant, think that I will not be hated too? By people who don't understand that the kingdom of God is no longer the kingdom of darkness. I've been transferred out of that kingdom. I live in this kingdom. I gotta tell you something else. It's a hot topic, but I'm gonna do it anyhow. When you stand up against the LGBTQ agenda, not against a person, not against a person, people aren't our enemies. The people aren't our enemies. It's this worldly system that has, has got people confused. How many know the Bible's never been confused? God made Adam and Eve, period. He made a man and a woman. Jesus confirmed that in the New Testament when he went on to say, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. Pastor Brad, if you're going to keep preaching like that, they're going to kick us off of Facebook. That's why we went to YouTube. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Come on, somebody. Uh -huh. I credit Ryan to that. I don't even know where YouTube's found, but he found it. Amen. I, listen, what I'm trying to tell you here, I'm trying to tell you that I ain't mad at the folks that are in this kingdom because I've been in this kingdom. I've been in the kingdom of darkness and I'm not mad at them. I love them, but I know because my master told me that when I stand for truth in this kingdom, 
I will be hated by those that are blinded in that kingdom. And that doesn't just go for me. Come on, believers in this room. This goes for you. Pastor Brad, I'm doing my best to let my light shine. How will I know if it's working? Well, one way is you'll be hated. Pastor Brad, nobody hates, my, nobody hates me. Everybody loves me. Everybody loves, then you better check yourself. I've learned this the hard way. When everybody in the church is happy with you, chances are he's not. Ooh, that was good. That was good. That's just thunder, but I'm playing it up. That's just thunder, but I'm playing it up. I'm telling you, I've learned the hard way that if you please everyone, chances are you're not pleasing God. Why do you say that, Pastor Brad? Because there's two kingdoms. And these kingdoms are opposite, and they're on a collision course. And when you go with the flow in this kingdom, it's only, it's only them Christians that are the problem. But when you get into this kingdom of God, and he transforms you and continues to transform you, and you begin to show his light, the Bible says you'll be hated. You'll be persecuted. I'll tell you tonight, I'm not going home with the fear of being beheaded. I'm not going home tonight afraid that... Some kind of law enforcement is going to come get me because I preached a sermon today. But I will tell you, I will lay my head on my pillow tonight knowing my family, my flesh and blood. Come on, let me say it one more time. That members of my own family, my own house, hate's a strong word, but certainly persecution fits. And why are you saying that, Pastor Brad? Because there's some mamas and daddies sitting in this room. There's some grandparents sitting in this room that you love your family, you love your children. There's some kids sitting in this room that maybe it's your parents and maybe your parents are persecuting you. I heard a story. I didn't say this first service and I'll finish. I heard a story about a a, a kid who went to youth camp, Pastor Ryan, and at youth camp, this kid got saved. He became a Christian. It was was an awesome experience for this teenager and he called his dad and he said, Dad, Dad, you're not going to believe it, but I'm a Christian. I accepted Jesus Christ. He died for my sins. He died for your sins. And oh, by the way, Dad, You're going to hell. (laughs) True story. Ten minutes later, his dad picked him up from camp. I don't know about ten minutes, but his dad picked him up from camp. You ain't going to that camp. You're not going. Why? Why? Because nobody wants to hear they're going to hell. Because nobody wants to hear that they're wrong. Nobody wants to be told that the way you're living is not right. Folks, All I have to do, and I've said this once before, I'll say it for the second time, help me Lord to say it no more, but all I've got to do is compromise a little. I could have my family back tonight. I could have my family back tonight, and all I have to do is compromise. Here's the problem. When I compromise a little bit, I'll lose other parts of my family. I pray that's true, Pastor Ryan. That when I compromise my values, I pray that man sitting right over there will stay strong. I'm not going to compromise. Let me start over. (laughs) I'm not going to compromise. I'm just telling you that's all I got to do. That's all you got to do. Dim that light a little bit. Are y'all hearing this good preaching? I'm going to amen myself here in a second. All you've got to do is dim that light. Turn them lights out. You're a little too bright. Don't be talking that. When you talk that strong, when you tell someone that that addiction is not right, when you tell someone that lifestyle doesn't line up with scriptures, and by the way, please do it in love. Too many hypocrite Christians out here. Too many legalistic Christians that want to point out everybody's sins the whole time they're doing something else. Don't don't be that guy. But be that guy. Help me, Lord, to be that man. Help my wife to be that woman who says, we love you, but we love you so much, we will not back down from the truth. If you want to ask me where I'm at spiritually today in some areas of my life, I can tell you exactly where I'm at. I'm sitting on the front porch, and I'm looking down the road, and I'm hoping my prodigal will come home today. Y'all hear me? I'm hoping my prodigal will come home today. Here's the truth. Last Friday, I found out my particle's still in the pig pen. 
and it breaks my heart. Well, come on, Brad, compromise, compromise. I can't because if I compromise, I didn't really love them. If I compromise, I didn't really love them. How do you know so much about this? And maybe you don't think I know anything. How do you think you know so much about this? Because I've been in this kingdom. I've been in this kingdom of darkness. I've been in this worldly system. I wasn't always Pastor Brad. Please don't ask questions. Amen. I wasn't always Pastor Brad. And I got to tell you, I know what it's like to be here. And you can't compromise, believers. You've got to let your light shine for Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. So you say, Pastor Brad, how come these people that are in the kingdom of the world, why, why can't they just see that, that God's way is the best way? I couldn't see it when I was in this kingdom. Let me just be blunt. I had to get to my lowest point in life before I looked over to see what's in this other kingdom. But let me give you a scripture. Would you write this down? 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 says, Satan who is the God of this world, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. They are unable to see the glorious light of the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. They don't understand this message about Christ, who is the exact likeness of God. That's what happens. If you're here this morning and you're not a Christian, then surely by now you're like, I can't stand this guy. His voice is getting on my nerves. I don't like what he's saying. I can't believe he said that about the LGBTQ because I have friends that are LGBTQ. I got family that's LGBTQ. And I love them with all my heart. But once again, let me be blunt. I love them enough to stand for God's truth. It's not easy. It's not easy at all watching people who are, have just got a blinder on. I mean, Satan put a blinder on them. They can't even see the truth. But don't get discouraged, mom, dad, grandparents, friends. Don't get discouraged. Why? Because the Holy Spirit's working. The Holy Spirit is working on them, just like the Holy Spirit worked on us when we were in the kingdom of darkness. And oh, by the way, the Holy Spirit's still working on me in the kingdom of light. As we get ready to close this message, I'll invite the praise team to come back up. As the praise team's coming back up, our service isn't over until we finish a couple of songs of worship, give an opportunity for a response in the altar. But before I go, I want to take you one last place. One more time, if you were to say here when you leave, what was that sermon all about? What was he trying to talk to us about? What did that guy even mean? What, what was he explaining? I was trying to say, hey, Christians, shine brighter. And you know you're shining brighter if you begin to receive persecution. When your teenagers are always mad at you because you take a stand and say, no, you're not doing that. That's wrong. Not when your teenagers are always bent out of shape because you're not letting them do what everyone else is doing. Come on, mom and dad. This isn't just a, a message for parents. I don't know who you're thinking about out there. I don't know who you would like to see come into the kingdom of light, but you need to be praying for them. You need to be shining your light bright. And if they have rejected you, nah, they rejected him. We're just his servants, so surely they're going to reject us. But let me leave you with the verse that speaks to my heart. And I pray it would speak to yours. 1 John 2, 15. The Bible says in 1 John 2, 15, do not love this world, nor the things it offers you. Now, that's where I want to pause for just a second. We'll read the rest of the verse, and then I'll let the praise team bring us home. I, I, I want you to know that I, I just got to tell you, I love the beach, and I love surf fishing. I just got into that surf fishing, okay? I just got into it. Last week was my first time, or two weeks ago, was my first time to really get serious about that. And, and I seriously wish I would put a picture of the fish I caught. As long as somehow, Pastor Ryan, you can make it look bigger. I don't know. Anyhow, I, I love going to the beach. And the truth is, I love the mountains. And hey, can I just be blunt? I love Mexican food. Come on, somebody. You're like, Pastor Brad, you're not supposed to love the things of this world. Stop. You don't understand the Greek. You're assuming the world means beaches and mountains and fishing or, or, or shopping. Or, no, stop, stop. The world here, scripturally, is a world system. 
It's the system that Satan is using to blind eyes. Come on, listen to what I'm saying here. Satan is the king of this kingdom. He's the ruler of this dark world. And, and he's blinded eyes. And, and now they're in a system that, let me say it this way and I'll close. Wrong is right and right is wrong. And that happens in this system of the world. So I close with the scripture. Do not love this world nor the things it offers you. For when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. I used to be a part of this kingdom, the kingdom of darkness. But for a long time now, I've been a part of the kingdom of light. I haven't always let my light shine super bright. I think there's been times I've hid it under a bushel. Church, we're living in a day and time where this world needs Christians. They need Christ. That's who they need. They need Christ. Come on, amen. But they need us to shine the light of Christ. I'm encouraging you today that even if persecution comes, even if it causes families to be at odds, and that's not the goal. The goal is not to be at odds with anybody, but the goal is this. The goal is that those blinders come off of their eyes just like they fell off of mine.